Welcome along guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hold on a sec. Apologies for the delay in garage based videos. That has nothing to do with me going out and riding motorcycles again. It all has to do with just waiting for stuff to arrive really and some exciting plans to come to fruition. Nice word. So welcome back. Um, today's episode really is going to be about showing you bits and bobs, showing you the clean parts, showing you the stuff I've come back which has been coated, painted. <laughs> If you look at the top there, there's a little subframe which will give you some clue to the colour I've gone and massive thanks to my mate Barry for painting that. But more on that in a minute. I've got some exciting news about the project, hence part of the reason for the delay. But before we get into all the ins and outs, let's start that intro. Roll the intro! So where do I start with what's been happening with this project? So first things first, do any of you guys watch a channel in Australia by a channel called Andy's Motorcycle Obsession? Anybody? Well, it's a great channel which I've started watching and he's just rebuilt a 900 SS Ducati, stripped the engine down completely, rebuilt it from the ground up and it got me thinking, he did as part of that a clutch mod made by a company called Bigelar Performance in the Netherlands. And I thought, well, you know what? I fancy a bit of this clutch mod business. So I contacted Twan, who is the proprietor of said business, and said, I'm also doing a Ducati rebuild. Do you fancy letting me share your clutch mod as part of my rebuild series? He said, yes, he'd love to, which we'll come on to that. When this clutch goes back together, we'll be using Twan's mod, which is fantastic by the way but after fishing through my channels and looking at some of my other videos he came up with a bit of a suggestion which i just had to take him up on so what Twan has offered to do is actually i send him my cylinder heads and he will polish pour and gas flow them he says basically i'll be getting another 10 brake horsepower i mentioned that my bike has the ducati performance cams in it and he said well i can expect even more because they are really the bottleneck for the engine so it's a fantastic offer there's no way i was turning down a polish and a porting <laughs> from a company like bigelar so today we're going to be stripping the heads off the bike disassembling the heads completely removing the cylinders off of the engine and then once we've got the bare cylinders bare heads i'm going to send those off to factory projects to be seracoated i have to choose what color i want to go but to get those seracoated once they've been seracoated send them all off to twan to work his magic on and then he's going to video him doing the porting work and then i can include that in a future episode probably the next episode so today we're really breaking into the engine. I've also got some polished and clean parts to show off. I must say some massive thanks to people as part of this episode. You know, I've had some good friends who work at powder coaters, good friends who are painters. So I'm gonna give them a bit of a shout out for doing this work for me for this project. But first of all, let me just show you the powder coated swinging arm because it's come out beautiful. So there is the swinging arm and some other bits and bobs, which I've also had coated. So this was that sort of, uh, well, it sort of wasn't black, it wasn't silver. It was like almost a, a sort of gun metal -y color, but it was very textured. Because I did all the scratching on the inside when I removed the exhaust, I thought, you know what, I want to get that powder coated because I think it'll just look nice as a single color. So I went for a nice gloss black, and this was done by my mate, Adam. A1 powder coating and I tell you it looks like wet paint. I've never seen such a smooth finish to powder coat before. He's obviously had to mask off all of the bearing areas so I have to refit all of the roller bearings, taper bearings into this now but that's going to look beautiful on the bike. So massive thanks Adam and A1 powder coating. I will put a link below because they're beautiful. I've also now got a box of cleaned bits. So this is all of the stuff I've cleaned on the bike, which has been through the uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. So cleaned up a lot of these parts. It's, you know, I think this has come up amazingly well in the ultrasonic cleaner, so I'm really happy. So my box of clean bits is slowly growing and my box of unclean bits is slowly reducing. Also, I've got a new seat cover 
the standard seat is pretty what it's pretty unattractive on these bikes it's, it's it's very comfortable it's practical but it is not the sexiest so i have a solution this is from a company called tapazeria italia they're italian you won't be surprised to hear but they make some absolutely beautiful seat covers so this has got to be installed but i am awaiting some uh, some staples so coming will be a video on fitting this and how easy this is to fit but I think this is gonna look beautiful. Hanging from the ceiling is my frame and also matching subframe. Massive thanks to my mate Barry. He's the chap with the 250 EXC who's shown up in a few videos when we've been going off road. He's a painter, he's got his own business. So I'll put links below to his, uh, his Facebook site where he does work. He does a lot of bike subframes, a lot of bike mainframes, all wet painted, all color matched, well chuffed with that. And I think that's gonna look beautiful on the bike with a matching subframe to the red frame. Massive thanks, Barry, you're a star, mate. Right, so I think that's enough shout outs <laughs> for one episode. So massive thanks to everyone who's helping me with this project. It's, it's incredible. This is really turning into something quite amazing. So I think what I'll do now is take the head off the engine. That's not, it sounds straightforward, but you need a special tool to actually get access to the, to the nuts to get the heads off. So I've bought the special tools. Now it's time to get these puppies off of the engine and sent off to Twan for him to work his magic. So we've got these four bolts holding this on. I've got my special tools. But there, there seems to be a little bit of Bit of waggle room on that which i'm not entirely impressed with half mil driver before i do that actually i'm going to take the uh take the belts off uh da -da 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 -da. i don't know if i should put the engine in tdc or anything I haven't got the tool for that. I don't have the special tool to get these nuts off. So I'm hoping I can undo these three here and that will then allow the belt to slip off. What I'll do is that I'll detension the belt here. Christ. Because it's gonna to have to obviously be all retimed when the heads come back, I'm not too worried about timing now really. I wonder if I should take that off. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Right, what we'll do now is take the whole, the whole head off now. Right, let's get it off. I don't know what I'm doing. Now I do feel <laughs> completely out of my comfort zone with this. It's not a nice feeling when you're working outside of your comfort zone. I've never taken apart engines before. This is all new for me. So it is a little bit worrying. These things are horrible. It's not nice sounds either. Oh God. Right. I think that's the main head bolts undone. And there should be the bolt and then some sort of washer underneath, I believe. There it is. And we'll just put all these, not on the floor, in the tub. And then the whole head should lift away, she says in a hopeful manner. Oh God. Ah, it's coming away at the bottom. It's coming apart here. The whole the cylinder's coming off with it. I guess if I take it all off in one piece, I can split it afterwards. <laughs> There's no going back once this comes off. There is no going back. Look at the size of the pistons. Absolutely huge. Come 
car baby. Woo. Ice gasket. There she is, off. Oh. The project has just gone to a whole nother level. <laughs> Of scariness. Oh, what am I doing? Can you see in my hole? Bet you never wanted to look in my hole, did you? There we go. It, it's I've got to split it apart yet, but there's the valves in there. <laughs> what am I doing? That is a big old piston. Right, there's the uh, forward-facing cylinder. I feel completely out of my comfort zone with this. I've got to be honest with you. This is not something I really wanted to be tackling but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. How else are you going to learn unless you just get stuck in? So that's the base gasket. Let's get off the base gasket off. So before I take the other cylinder off, I'm going to try and split this one. Let's, let's, let's break one first before we start wrecking the other one as well. Let's see if I can actually do this before going any further. Let's try and pry it a little bit again. Pry this apart, because that should really just come apart. A lot of grit and Christ knows what falling out of it, something. Why don't you want to come apart? In the manual it just says it slides apart. Oh god. Yeah, I think it's on a dowel here and it's stuck on the dowel where they dowel together. Getting close, we're getting very, 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 very close. <sighs> That is the issue, this dowel, and I think there's an oil return or an oil feed, and that's what's holding it together so tight. I can imagine people around the world screaming at their computers for me to stop. You're wrecking it, chops! What are you doing? Take it to a professional! You don't know what you're doing! You could be right. Oh, oh, God, what a job that was. That's the problem, see, there's a little locating dowel here and a big, I guess that's an oil feed and it's all a little bit cor corroded. Oh, and the head gasket's on here. You can apparently reuse the head gasket, but I think that one could well be beyond reusing. I think it's gonna need a new head gasket. And there is the cylinder head. Oh, I've got to strip it now. <laughs> oh, God. Have we got to do it all again for the other one? Hopefully, we won't need these again. I've got to pop this little clip out. Then this whole rocker moves across. And then you can get all the clips and etc. off of the valve and slide the valve out the bottom. And then the same for the other side. On these Ducatis, they're desmodromic valves, so rather than having a spring that returns the valve, these push and pull, basically, these rockers. So they lower and raise the valve in the head. It's a special Ducati thing. Ducatis have always done it. It's just sort of a... well, now I think it's more of a heritage sort of thing, the reason they've kept it, because valve springs don't really snap these days. But uh, that's the, the reasoning behind that design. And now... Let's try and break it. These do clip off. The ching. I got him. I got him. Put him in the pot. And then this should slide across. There we go. There we go. So that pushes the rocker clear of the valve. That is your shim. If I was re-shimming it doing valve clearances, that's your shim to shim it to the correct uh, tolerance. So that's the shim. Right, I managed to get the other side done. I've done the uh, the inlet side, so I'm going to moving on to the exhaust side now. Twan said just to put everything in one bag. He knows where everything goes, he knows where everything is, but I'm tempted to do the, at least put the exhaust and inlet in different bags. Oh my God, I've, I've got a bloody valve out. There's also these tiny little clips which hold the valve in. So let's put all those in the valve bag. So what I learned from doing the other side is even in the manual it says put a screwdriver on here, push this down, keep the valve up and slide, try and slide that down on the shaft and then pick out the little hooks which hold it all in. It's the fiddliest thing in the world. 
It's really a two-man bloody job. So push this down. It's under spring tension, so it's really hard. And then you don't want the valve to drop. You want that to drop, not the valve. You need another hand to hold the spring, to hold the valve. Some sort of clip on that valve, really, to stop it dropping. I've got nothing. Peg? Maybe even a simple peg. I can see the little suckers. Should I now hook those off? Oh, I'll drop one. Oh, it's one of the little buggers. Come on, I oh, got it. Where did that go? There he is. Got him. Now I think this should come off of the valve. Yes. And the valve should slide out of the head like so. Ooh. Right, next job is trying to get all these rockers out and stuff. And I'm worried that I'm going to have to try and get that nut off there. And I'm just not going to be able to do that without a special tool. Well, I probably should have done it <laughs> while it was on the engine. Bloody nightmare. I don't recommend it at home, kids. <laughs> so that's the valves out of the head. No valves in there, sir. That's a bit of my covering to stop dust getting in. Now I've got to try and get all these rockers out. And uh, I think I'm going to have to try and get this bolt off of the end here. I don't know if I'm going to do it without the special tools. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. There's also special tools which screw into here to extract these uh, bolts, what do you call them, shafts? I haven't got that special tool either. <laughs> I don't know if these screw in or whether they just, I've put a five mil bolt in to try and pull them out, but I think they must screw in. The KTM ones are similar. They slide out and you can pull them out with, uh, with a bolt on them, but I don't know if they're actually screwed in. Back to the manual, I think. <sighs> Oh, well, that was rather tense, wasn't it? Oh, that was way beyond my... My comfort level's here. That was up here. <laughs> I, I didn't feel comfortable doing that whole thing, but I think we're getting somewhere now. But I can't go any further because I need the special tools to actually hold that upper pulley and undo that nut. There's a special tool to hold the pulley and another special tool to, tool to undo the nut itself. So I've ordered those. Another 80 quid. <laughs> this project is getting expensive, but they're on the way, but I can't continue until we've got those special tools now. So I thought I'd bring this video out now rather than make you wait for another week until the job's completed. So this is a two-parter of uh, what I said was going to be eight parts when I started this. We're already into eight episodes. So I think this one's going to run <laughs> into the teens for sure. But there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll bring you the next episode as soon as I can, as soon as those special tools arrive. I'm also going to have all of my lovely Cerakoted parts turning up shortly. Probably today, where's that postman? All of my Cerakoted casings. And then, of course, I've got to send the head and barrels off for Cerakoting once they're fully stripped. I'm probably going to go blacker and darker on the barrels now. Because the Cerakote is tough, it's not going to chip. I can go darker. So, uh, yeah, it's going to look fantastic, I think, with those. Because that, the, the paint I did was okay, but the barrels let it down. So, uh, with the properly Cerakoted barrels, it should look lovely. But there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your support, as always. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.